What's up with y'all? I'm back with another video. Today we got the Junko Furuta case in complete detail. I'm out of the loop. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay. Horrific case I've ever heard of. It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of by now, but I'm not sure if you've ever heard about it in complete gruesome detail. This is the story of Junko Furuta, widely considered to be one of the worst crimes ever committed in human history. So for the love of God, please don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety. Trust me. Junko Furuta was a young woman who was born in Misato in the Saitama Prefecture of Japan. Her family consisted of a mother, father, an older brother, and a younger brother. She attended high school at a school in Saitama while working part-time at a plastic molding factory after school. She was saving up for a big graduation trip she was planning. She was all set up to start working at an electronics store after she graduated. She was fairly popular and well-liked by her classmates. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She was active, attractive, and attracted a lot of attention, which made some people jealous. She didn't drink, didn't smoke, and definitely never touched any drugs. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school, the Yakuza wannabes. One of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Miyano, he actually developed a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. He proposed this and she refused. Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school, one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time. Usually nobody dared defy him. He couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. Hiroshi did not take this well at all. He couldn't believe that anyone would ever Harusha, I would have beat your ass if I went to school with you. They could have, bro. <laughs> Reject him. That's great. He took it as a complete and total insult. He got together with a few of his wannabe Yakuza buddies, and they all hatched a plan to get revenge on Junko. They would get another one of their friends to attack Junko, and then Hiroshi would come to the rescue. After he won a bit of her trust, they could take her wherever they wanted. On November 25th of 1988, Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano, was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. He then offered to escort her home. Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. Hiroshi took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connections to her. He then took his time raping her over and over. Then he took her to a hotel. In the hotel, he called his friends, Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this, as they had just recently done it. Let me know in the comment section, where do you think this stemmed from? Do you think they simply a mirror of their construct that doesn't work? Or do you think something happened to them as a kid? Or do you think it varies? Or do you think it's the pretty much what your ancestors have been through. A lot of people tend to think you have a kid and they born with a blank slate, a canvas. That's not true. The sentiment in the Bible is very true that you will suffer of your father's doings. That's not the words verbatim, but that's the sentiment. Just like if your father rich, you're gonna be born with a diamond spoon, I guess. If your father wasn't there, you're gonna be born without your father there. But um, do y'all think this is from like the ancestors, like passed down from the RNA? Through your ribonucleic acid from your father and mother's dad, which make up of you today, 
or do you think it's a variation that genetics and your genetics is directly connected to your psychological state another step um what you ingesting people can simply be chemically imbalanced due to what they consume or do you feel like people is like born inherently irredeemably evil like with gens or archons on them or something that take a special kind of sick to that's sick bro I never understand this shit so I stand under it rest assured let's continue though met to another girl in the past few weeks fuck they decided that they were having far too much fun to just set her free again there was also the possibility that she would call the cops and tell them what happened, and they couldn't have that. The next morning, Hiroshi took Junko to a nearby park, where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy, Nobuharu Minato, were waiting. They learned Junko's address and used it to threaten her, telling her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home, where they continued to assault her. This is where, for 42 more days, she would be held prisoner. On the third day that Junko was missing, her parents were dealing with the police, trying to get her found. Knowing this would happen, the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend, safe and sound. She was forced to ask her mom to stop the investigation. They held Junko captive in the bedroom, forcing her to pose as one of the boy's girlfriend. It didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the this, whole girlfriend- This story about to piss me off, bro. I must have watched this whole thing. I wish I was immersed in that world growing up. If I was at their school, you already know they would have been on some shit because I'm the only melanated god in there. I'd have been whooping their ass, squaw wiping shit solo, sending their ass back to the loading screen with no materials. I'm like that. Man, at, back at school, I was Jimmy Hopkins. If you know who that is, comment. <laughs> Friend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately after arriving at the home, the boys forced Junko into becoming their toy. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times a day, often taking turns. They were proud of what they were doing, regularly boasting to their friends that they had a woman trapped in- I see why he gave y'all a warning if you feel squeamish to the graphic details he did. It's like something in my brain is just turning and doing this like I'm really getting fucking agitated. They hear stuff like this, and it's based on a true story. <sighs> That's how you know, bro. That's not just some woke shit. Like, pay attention to what you're consuming. Fluids, matter, solid matter, whatever you eat, as well as what you see through your eyes and what you hear, because I feel negativity listening to this. and ready for their personal use. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. In the first few days, at least 30 of them raped her, and at least 100 knew of her imprisonment. Even women were invited to come see the spectacle, with a young girl even being invited to come over and see the prisoner, who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day seven mark, Junko had been already completely stripped of all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was constantly beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her, only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being held in. His brother did nothing aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. His parents were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature her for... Did they say her brother did nothing? What? The fuck? Again. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were uh, living in the same house that she was being held in. Oh. His brother did nothing aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. 
His parents were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature firsthand. They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. And most disgustingly, they worried about losing their good reputation in the community. I mean, if the you if the Yakuza stand by some shit like that, if you condone that, you uh you a bully coward. Yeah, your whole group is full of bully cowards. If you stand by something like that, I understand going against the system. The system is corrupt. All government is corrupt. They rich as fuck. They stepping on you. They kid born and need an organ. They're going to get one of the poor ones killed and feel like they're entitled to your kids' organs. They feel like they're as better. They rich. They, uh, they the elite. So I get if you like got a brotherhood and y'all all... all share the same foundation or whatever the fuck that be but i would think it'd be some honor in there along the lines you condone and rape and all this this again i understand going against the system i feel like you should have a brotherhood and go against the system it's about people places and things you're going to go places there's going to be people there with things possibly to harm you we in hell that's crazy they condone shit like this After about 10 days of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her. Because of the ongoing, endless beatings, so much blood had accumulated in her sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. This also led to severe dehydration. Anytime she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the balcony of the home in extreme cold temperatures, sometimes near or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men... I hate to keep pausing it, but... What is this? What will one of you woke motherfuckers say now? Is this karmic retribution? Did she know what she was going to be dealing with when she signed up for Earth and coming down here and forgetting whatever the past lives? Or oh, your God and Jesus you believe in. What's the excuse for this? For uh, innocent, whether it's a female kid or what, that's innocent, they ain't did nothing to deserve this. You know what it's like to be out in the cold? That alone being jumped and beaten by men and they more fragile to pain and all so it's different i can never understand that it even not being able to physically defend herself against a male that's naturally stronger and multiple of them at the end the cold yeah whoa that's what i don't get it's like everything happens everything that's going to happen happened already but you can change and go into a different universe or where you're something else. And it's like a paradoxical. I never understand that, probably. I don't get how it's people that's innocent. And then you got woke, fake woke motherfuckers in the community that be like, everything that's going to happen to you or whatever, you signed up for this shit coming down to earth. And it's supposed to make you better and mature your soul. I don't see how is this is. I understand you got to struggle and go through trial and tribulation and error to become better, but some things are unnecessary. To be raped or whatever, man, that shit is crazy to me, bro. This shit, like, bro, there's so many reasons why I'm the way I am. There's so many reasons why I don't want a daughter. There's so many reasons why. This shit is crazy, bro. Because this shit really do happen to the innocent. The weak, whatever you want to call it. And ain't nobody coming to save them, bitch. You're God, you're Jesus, Allah, Akbar, Yahshua, Yahweh, nothing. Not even the cops. Some of them like to indulge in the same activity. And they get away with it because they'd be who you least expected to be the suspect. And that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her. His brother. This brother of his ended up informing the police about what was going on at the Minato house. Two officers were soon dispatched to go check things out. Minato's parents came to the door. 
When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left, without ever bothering to check even a single detail. Took it at face value. It's a damn shame. After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire, leaving her with severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Are you serious, bro? And I'm supposed to be reacting to this? Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and ended up drinking too much. Junko took this as a chance to try to escape. She crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. The phone rang, and an officer picked up. Just as she was about to speak, Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. He put the receiver to his ear and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. She was then pulled back into the bedroom. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she was correct. They punished her by holding her down and taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around. Bro, where is he getting these details from, bro? Did she survive or something somehow? Like, how is you getting these details? Like, did they get caught? I want to I wanna click right here and see what the fuck going on. Found her. Then they covered her entire body mainly her legs, in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more. Afterwards, she started convulsing. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her on fire once again, only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, she began begging her captors to just kill her and be done with it. Damn. They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. The boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage this would have caused. After about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate. How the fuck is this allowed on YouTube? Even hearing this is fucked up, like... I didn't get striked for some bullshit, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing and compared to the, I know it's a story, but still though. Grenade properly. She had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her, many sharp and jagged. Even fireworks had been inserted into her. The fireworks were not limited to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her anus, mouth, and ears as well. She was left- Bro, this story better be fake, bro. Are you serious, bro? You can't be serious, bro. This shit is sick. Oh my god. That shit is sad, bro. Reasons like this. Reasons like this alone is why I don't believe in your God or Jesus. Fuck both of them. How I feel. I understand. I can be the best I can be no matter what. I can be the best I can be or I can be the worst I can be. Either way, whatever's going to happen to you going to happen to you. Motherfuckers can bring the Judas Cradle with a brazen bull out. Scaffold system, bird eagle, and all kind of ancient tortured devices and... Man, you could be the most great, great person, like, and you're going to go through 
whatever these group of people want to do to you. They impose and they will on you and God bitch ass ain't coming to save you. I guess God may be some, would take the edge off of me. It make me mad if I know of God. It's like a physical entity that's sitting down like me right now and you allow this shit or what would take some of the edge off is if God is literally just a frequency of energy, then I can't be mad. Just pick a side good and evil and no matter the era, no matter the vibration, I guess conflict, no matter the era. Because it's like, I can't, this shit is crazy, bro, that this shit is possible. And yet, if she go to the afterlife and see the creator and start speaking to him, how would you, what would he say to this? I say all this to say I'm putting the power in my own hands. I got the utmost faith in myself. I will never give my power to some external entity that I don't know. Fuck them. In my lowest and darkest times, I only had thyself and that voice I hear in my head. That's all I only had. So. And that's why I want to become as strong as I can to protect my friends and my loved ones in. And bestow the same knowledge upon them to whatever I took the time out and learned. And I felt like that's important and vital. Share it to them as well. That's why I feel like it's important to be competent and capable and having your life skills down pat. And really get in tune. Knowing how to discern and to go with your gut feeling. No matter how anyone else look at you like, oh, you're anxious or... Nah, you need to act on that because that one second could be the matter of life and death. This shit is crazy, bro. And this can happen to, this can happen to anybody, shit like this. All it takes is a group of motherfuckers that want to impose their will on you. It's people falsely incarcerated. They want to go home so bad, they just in there crying, going through whatever they going through. And, and inhumane living conditions and, and God bitch ass ain't doing nothing. Whatever God to be. It can't be an actual person. Right? Shit gotta be an energy or something. Because then I can't be as mad. So it's like we just here and we gotta deal with what we, what we gotta deal with. I don't understand that shit, man. Left with eardrum damage so severe that Hold on, hold on. Okay, it's 4 p. All right. She was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she could hardly move. At best, she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl to the bathroom. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. They used the same strategy again to abduct and gang rape another 19-year-old woman while she was on her way home from work. This game, you're not ready for. During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. Some of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day, day and night, in all orifices. More than a hundred men are believed to have raped her by the end. Sometimes she was raped by up to 12 different attackers in a single day. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most of the time. Many of the men who raped her also urinated on her. She was forced to pleasure herself in front of the attackers for their entertainment. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. She had dumbbells dropped all over her body and her head stomped against the ground face first. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects shoved into all orifices, including, but not limited to, bottles, both broken and unbroken, iron bars, scissors, roasting needles, chicken skewers, and more. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. 
She had her left nipple ripped off by a pair of pliers. She would be tied up flat on the floor and had dumbbells. Bro, can you shut the fuck up now? Come on, like, what the fuck? Bro, I hope y'all know, bro, if you believe in hell, just know we're, we're in hell. Hell, hell, bro. <sighs> the demons and the devils are amongst us. This shit. And just know, this is just a story you heard. What about the stories you didn't hear? While I'm making this video right now, is somebody going through something to the same nature of this? Maybe even worse, like flaying or boiling. There's somebody going through this shit right now. And it's not just one person. How many people is on the planet in all these different countries? And it's a lot of people going through shit like this right now, literally. Like, at the end of that, you would just see them out and about. Never know. You at the grocery store, you think you just seeing normal people, bro. It's wicked out here for real, man. That shit is sick. Like, are you serious? Uh. Bells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen were so hard that it caused her to lose all control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. Her eyelids were burned with hot wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in fear. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing needles, the needles often being left inside. Her genitals were burned with cigarettes and lighters. She had a hot lit light bulb inserted into her vagina and moved around until it shattered. By the end, she looked like a completely different person after all of the damage. It was hard to even make out her facial features. Her body was severely damaged and crippled, and she smelled as if she were already rotting. She was continuously heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. She wheezed heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, Junko woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be killed, completely unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Junko to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, who treated her to a severe beating with an iron barbell, and then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach. Y'all hear this? She been, she been through more pain than Jesus that sacrificed his life for your sins, you stupid fuck. I'm not here to judge you with your religion, orientation, or what have you. You a bot, though. This is crazy. She went, she sustained more. Well, I wouldn't say sustained. I don't know if she lived or died, but she been through more than Jesus. and finally her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. Bro, Minato's just... brother called him within 24 hours to inform him that Junko had died. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic, fearing what would certainly- Where, where is they at, bro? What era was this? When did this happen? I will kill all of us. All of them can- YouTube, this is for entertainment purposes only. My bad. I'm talking about Warzone. But all of them can go against me. Literally, right now, I will whoop all of us. I'll make your Kuzo look like Hadoop. I- Is this serious? They really was part. I wouldn't give a fuck if you part of the Yakuza or not. I beat all four of your henchmen ass. You can't fuck with me. I got the superior genetics. I'm indigenous aboriginal to the planet. I'm God's man. Y'all monkeys. I don't care who offended. 
this shit is crazy. Like, where is a where where is a me at when when it's needed? And his look, man. <laughs> you know what I would have did to them? You did that. You did that, and I know you did that. That's going to be the day I start flaying. I, I used to think, like, yo, am I capable of doing some shit like that? But if that's my friend or my people's and you did that to her and I know this, I'm going to inflict max pain, maximum. I'm going to the store to get acid. I'm doing everything. And I'm going to make sure you stay alive. I'm... <sighs> this is crazy, bro. This is. This ain't only in Japan or wherever the fuck this at. This in the United States as well as people that's not attended to their kids. And they got kids and they doing whatever and they getting away with it. This shit is crazy, bro only be a life sentence or even a death sentence the boys started to freak out but they came up with a plan the captors then put her body into a 55 gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete a small bit of junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete something they apparently didn't notice they disposed of the barrel at a construction site in koto tokyo <laughs> Seeing that place now, you'd never imagine something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. There weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. And, thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. He realized his mistake, but it was already too late, and he told the police where they had hid the body. Joe Ogura had already been arrested for another unrelated sexual you assault. Ugly case. fuck. He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. The other boys were then arrested within the next few Why days. Why is they face blanked out? Later, the drum was finally opened and the concrete was broke open revealing Junko's long-deceased body in a nightmare-inducing, horrific condition. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she fainted. She ended up in a long-term stay in a psychiatric hospital. An autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing... I don't blame her. She fainted, now she in a psych ward. To know that that happened to your kid... That happened to your daughter and there wasn't nothing you can do about it and all the pain she felt and whoever you believe in ain't help her. That shit's crazy to me, bro. And what's crazy is this shit still happening, bro. It's in the US. It's all across the world. Ghana. I'm just naming shit at this point, but it's everywhere, man. People going through all kind of... That shit is crazy, bro. The true horror of what had happened to her. Small bottles were found still stuck in her rectal cavity, and it was revealed that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Being that they were juveniles, the court withheld the names of the four captors. But journalists from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them, stating that they were inhuman and therefore didn't deserve human rights. Nobody really contested this. As we know, they were Hiroshi Miyano. Just know, everybody walking down, everybody, just because they got two arms and, leg, and two legs don't make them... 
Everybody walking amongst you does not have souls. They have no connection to the solar system, the sun. They don't. In fact, low fertility rates, melanoma, skin cancer. Um, some people don't have no internal dialogue. How can you inflict this pain on someone and you can't take it yourself? That's what I don't like. You doing something to somebody that you can't take yourself. You'll be screaming like a a bitch you cannot take what you dishing out that's crazy to me ultimate cowards and bullies where his parents at bro i want to whoop they ass or the yakuza that allowed them to do this they're going to need a gang so low they can't fuck with me at all you're going to need a gang shit because one of us taking 10 of them easily it's always been it like that it's always been like that like who was at the time. Joe Ogura, also 18 at the time. Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time. And Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details of the case. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences for such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. Still, after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. Something that, to this day, continues to enrage people who hear about this case. That's fine. They don't deserve to just sit there in prison and just when they get out, y'all as a collective, go and handle them. Go and do the most cra Do the, what's the, bamboo torture. Something, y'all, bro, this is crazy. I'm getting flabbergasted. I'm running out of words and shit, like. I don't even want to upload nothing else today. This might be a one and done. I'm depleted. No chakra reserves. Right now, I need some... I need some some hookah and some weed or something. And I need to go to sleep and forget about this. The boys somehow were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment, something that you'll remember if you saw my Yu-Gi-Oh! Yamaji video. Usually this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Minato got a five to seven year sentence himself. Watanabe got nine years, and Joe got an eight-year sentence. <sighs> One sad thing is that these monsters actually received even lower sentences than that at first. They were only increased to the still low amount after an appeal. It was so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. By the That's what I was thinking. Did they slide the judge some extra cash, or did they threaten him? Was he threatened a bribe? Threaten the bribe. Yakuza, if you condone and shit like this, I have zero respect for y'all. You're gonna need a collective anyway, because if I if it's a collective of us versus a collective of y'all, we're gonna squad wipe you. It doesn't matter. We're gods, man. We ain't child, we ain't regular NPC, GTA pedestrian, beta cut sim NCOs roaming the planet. We're not. Who was condoning something like this? I would think. I'm thinking you got a system and it's up. For y'all benefit, because we understand the powers that be is evil people. But you got to have some kind of codes, ethics, morals, principles, integrity, boundaries, righteousness, virtue. You got to have something. Y'all was supposed to handle them. Let me know, is this real? Like, do the Yakuza really condone this? Because if so, fuck them people. Straight up.
That's crazy. Time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. The same thing happened to two of the other boys, and after seeing enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually up. And I bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. Well, let's see. After Nobuhara Minato got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. He did this for obvious reasons. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. They soon divorced and the wife ended up with custody of the child. Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, what are you looking at? Minato came over and punched the man. The man then got out of his car and a fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he had hidden. The police were called at some point and they rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He denied attempted murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. Joe Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Look Joe this little ugly nigga. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. His father had vowed to give their entire life savings to Junko's family out of shame. But Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. Joe's mother wasn't much better, as she actually vandalized Junko's grave, saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe actually managed to find some women to date him. He ended up marrying a Chinese woman, but the marriage didn't last too long. Afterwards, he started dating another woman. He went back to prison in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was luring his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. He proudly told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. He was sentenced to four years in prison. But in 2009, he was once again free, and he is still free to this day. The ringleader- Where he at? I beat all they ass by myself, solo, squad wipe. It's simple. It's, it's simple, I, I promise you. I do it free at charge. I believe in the alpha. Both of your eyes, if you did it on purpose, you did it on purpose. Leader, Hiroshi Miyano, went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. He was arrested for fraud at some point after this, but didn't see jail time for it. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link several more criminals to the crime, including two men named Koichi Ihara and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed to the public. It is unknown if they will all face any sort of charges. They said, then they say earlier, hundreds of men, they sick as fuck. There's no bitch, you're walking past them every day, motherfucker with four syllables. I'm sick of motherfuckers who wanna walk around like shit is normal and everybody normal and love one another and let's get along. Man, that's why I'm already, as soon as I step foot outside, it's already like that. I'm not being nice to you, not saying I'm being an asshole to you, but it's already what it is. And I step on your ass in 1.1 seconds. Cause I see it for what it is and life will not exploit me for what I don't know. I know this is crazy. Time will tell. 44. Hopefully this don't go. So dead. there it is. The worst case I've ever heard of. I get this question a lot and it's, it's just always this one. There are a couple of others that come kind of close, but it's really hard to 
top something like this. I mean, you've got the brutality, the length, the scale. I mean, just... So asking if you like this video seems a little bit fucked up. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like. It helps me out. Although I doubt this video is going to really be pushed, but yeah. If you like dark content like this, uh, be Hell sure to subscribe. Nah. I, I do a lot of it. And if you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page that's linked in the description. Speaking of which, shout out to my top patrons. David McLaughlin, Marsh, Buffa Zerk, Long Roll. Bro, that shit is sick, bro. Okay, this might be the only video I upload today, bro. You seen the residual effects just now. Earlier in the video, what was I speaking of? What you consume, being what you eat, what you drink, what you see with your eyes, and what you hear. And what you hear. Because this definitely negatively affected me, affected me for the time being. That's it for the video, man. R.I.P. Junko Furuta. R.I.P. the baby girl. That's crazy, bro. Where is the friends like me when shit like this is happening to people? Just know this shit can happen to you, dog. If you a gal out there, bro, and you got the money and the means to do so, go out there and, and get some training. Get your John Wick, Keanu Reeves training. Or if you a female as well. Because, man, it's sick out here. This shit can happen. You just betting on it not to happen. How this shit works is, okay, I don't want to compare it to the lottery, but let's say everyone got, you know how we all got um, social securities? We all got socials, just numbers. And when your number is called and someone just kidnapped you and they impose and they will on you. They can do this to you. They can do even worse possibly and you will go through the motions until you deceased and whatever you believe, God, Jesus, they ain't coming to save you, bro. That's why it's better to not get in this situation to begin with. Yeah, like the video if you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. And it's up to the citizens. It's up to the, the family out there. Do whatever you need to do. Go and get them. Pay for someone to do the same thing that I'm or something. I believe in the eye for both of your ass. You did it on purpose. This literally is one of the worst things, stories I've ever heard. Aside from the history, not his story that's told by the victors, the last, the real history of what happened to the indigenous aboriginal people. But this is crazy, bro. <laughs> I ain't got words for this shit. <laughs> I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.